So thank you all for being here and to my talk on mini debug info support in LLDB. And uh, I'm Conrad Klein. I work for Red Hat and mostly on upstream LLDB since last year. Before that, I worked on, on OpenShift in 2016 uh, and until recently. Um, so the goal of this whole project was to improve uh, LLDB as a debugger for Fedora and RHEL binaries where you mostly have, uh, when you have only release binaries, right? You don't have debug symbols installed. And um, that means you don't have any symbols directly accessible. And that means whenever a program crashes and your, your tool picks it up, you, you only see uh, addresses and no symbol names. And the approach was uh, to make LDB aware of uh, mini debug info, which is a concept we're going to talk about. And it could be that I use mini debug info and the GNU debug data section uh, interchangeably, so please excuse that. And the mini debug info is where those symbols are stored that we are interested in. Um, so uh, it's helpful to talk a little bit about why it was invented and how it was invented because before we go into uh, how it actually looks. So the, uh, um, it has been invented before I joined Red Hat, long before, and I only talked to colleagues recently about uh, why was it invented this way and not some other way? <laughs> and uh, so the uh, whole idea was to be able to generate a backtrace for uh, crashes uh, when you have the automatic bug reporting tool in Fedora. And for that, one wants to have uh, symbol names and probably line numbers and file names and such. And so those make up an ELF file on their own, right? And uh, the idea was uh, to put them all in and eventually it all got too big and was we everything was stripped out and so you only are left with the, uh, the regular uh, symbol table but cut down in fashion I'm going to show later but essentially just function names and that's it, no variables or parameters and everything else, the rest format itself remained even though maybe the information could be stuffed in different places uh, somewhere else. One thing to remember is this is nothing to do with uh, debug information even though it's called mini debug info. It's just symbol tables and nothing else. So there's no relation to dwarf whatsoever. And um, yeah, this is, I hope you can read this. It's not, can you read that? It's somewhat, <laughs> okay. So essentially we, we can just talk about the bubbles here. So the, to the left you see uh, sort of an ELF file in my mind. Uh, you have this green bubble where you have the DIN sim, the dynamic symbols, right? And the sim tab and usually the sim tab is, this, is uh, the superset of the, uh, the DIN sim plus more. And when you have a release binary, right, you, you essentially cut this out. It's not long, no longer there. And uh, you usually cut it out and put it next to the debug packages and install it there. But since we're dealing with uh, binaries that have only release information and as for Fedora and RHEL, also uh, the mini debug info, that's this place here. Um, that's essentially a GNU debug data section, an invented section that contains data um, namely an ELF file on its own, which is essentially, as you can see, the reference there, uh, essentially the sim tab, but cut out all the duplication from the dynamic symbols and the holes that looks like it's uh, Swiss cheese. That's more or less, uh, we've put out everything that is not a function name or, um, for example, you've put, uh, stripped out symbol names and variables and so forth, uh, sorry, uh, variables and parameters, right? And uh, that has some implications on LODB. For example, um, when you start the program and you read the symbols, you, um, LDB usually tries to find um, if, there's a, if there's a SIM tab, that's enough, right? You have everything. Um, but if there's no SIM tab, LDB would look, go and say, oh, yeah, I read the DIN SIM, and that's it. And here, uh, the implement, whole implementation evolved around uh, trying to combine those two to have something that is at least capable to give you symbols for your, uh, for your functions, and uh, symbol names, it's just, I should say. So um, the way I, I did this was focus on, uh, on backtraces and not on crashes or so forth, but make LDB essentially aware of those symbols so that you can set a breakpoint, hit it, and maybe dump the symbols. And for that, I just took an a, uh, whatever I found, <laughs> a zip binary that it's, uh, that is uh, mostly installed in every system and I sort of blindly identified a function uh, and the only um, hurdles were it must not come from DINSIM because that's what LDB can read. It must come from the GNU debug data section and then we're gonna do a shootout of GDB versus LDB. And um, so um, 
on this slide, you can see uh, I've dumped the symbols. So this zip.gg uh, GDD on line two, that is essentially the uh, GNU debug data section that I've extracted from the uh, zip binary. And here you can see this uh, promising help function, uh, help symbol, because I, I just looked at it and said, okay, uh, maybe you can find that some other way, but I looked at it and said, yeah, maybe it's promising if you call zip dash dash help, maybe that gets triggered and we can, uh, on this line, we just, on line tw 12, we see that, yeah, it's, uh, it's not in the directly accessible symbols, um, so it must come from the GNU debug data section it's, uh, itself, and it's no duplication there. So uh, let's be brave and try a demo. Uh, it's not a fancy demo, but uh, at least it's somewhat, inter somewhat interactive. So um, when I fire up GDB, uh, calling exactly what I did, showed you before, um, zip dash dash help, you can see that GDB tells us, yeah, we're, I'm reading symbols from GNU debug data section. And it also tells us I don't have any debug symbols installed, which means we're not cheating. So uh, what GDB, uh, what, right? Uh, so if we start the program, you, you get what you expect, the regular uh, zip help output. But if we want to set a breakpoint on help, right, it can find the breakpoint, uh, a breakpoint, and if you run again, it, hold, it stops there, just as you would expect. So that's nice. Let's see how, um, let's see how uh, LDB performs here. And I'm talking about LDB 9, which is what ships with Fedora 31. So, um, doesn't tell us anything much. The calling conventions looks a little bit different. And here the same, we run it, we see the output, and if we do try to set the breakpoint on help, no way it finds it, right? It's uh, just not there. So that was uh, how it worked in LDB um, 9, in LDB, LDB 10, which should be shipping soon, I guess, or packaged soon. We, uh, there's proof, right, we run it, and we can set the breakpoint and help. It finds it, it stops, and it's just, uh, essentially the proof that, yeah, it works. Hey, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, that worked, and uh, the question is, is this ready to ship? No, of course not, and the main part was in, in testing. So just as a word of warning, this was my first contribution to LDB itself. Uh, like I said, I only started last year. We have a bunch of tests that um, I've been asked to implement it, like take the GNU debug data section, find a symbol in there using image dump sim tab, and issue a warning when you have a mini debug info where you essentially try to decompress it, but you don't have LZ to make support uh, compiled within, or when you're having a compressed, I mean, you can read for yourself, we have corrupted archive, right? Um, and the last one was uh, the tricky bit, uh, getting the, uh, there's a GDB manual page where it says, how are you gonna, or how are you gonna construct a, a binary that has this mini debug info installed? And um, I need to sort of replicate that in, in LLDB because uh, that is the only way I can really set and hit a breakpoint. And uh, you might wonder that what parts were hard or what, which not, and um, actually setting a breakpoint worked more or less out of the box. The, the only problem was that um, there was some confusion upstream about uh, how to create this ELF object and um, turned out to be very easy, but uh, hitting the, hitting the breakpoint didn't work because uh, I uh, essentially just uh, fetched the, the, uh, the op created an object file, fetched the uh, sim tab out of it and stored it where we stored the other sim tab and thought, yeah, it's, it's using it correctly, I can hit the breakpoint, everything's fine, but actually LDB has some concept of unified section lists, and I need to put it in there, and then it all worked. And um, also LDB does work with um, this uh, concept of having a stripped down ELF file that is not runnable, but um, where it can do simtab uh, dumps on, or, um, yeah, and that's, not ideal to, to if you want to say, I can hit a breakpoint, right? It needs to be runnable. And uh, what was a pain for me was that um, the tool in LLVM that was used for that is uh, uh, YAML to object, which takes those YAML files. If we have enough time, we can show you that. Um, and it always uh, takes the YAML file and produces an ELF file. And um, that made my test go nuts in my head. It exploded because it always produced the SIM tab, and I didn't realize that at first. Um, because then LLB only sees, yeah, I see a sim tab, I'm going to read that, and it was empty, no symbols found, so. <laughs> um, like usual, you have uh, the regular polishing for upstream, making everybody happy, and um, documentation is 
really an issue in, uh, in LLDB, I'd say. Um, yeah, so uh, we have more time, so let's head over the, to some uh, more slides. Um, what I really liked was, uh, I came to love actually the, the LLV, LLVM integrated tester, which consumes files like this one, but it doesn't have to be a C file. Um, here, as you can see, probably guess we just print the number of arguments in line eight, and that's about it. And we have a number of tools involved here. So you pass this to the, uh, the LV, LVM lit tester, and it double, it, it is interested in those requires and run comments that, that you can see there. And it just says, yeah, I need a Linux system, LZMA support must be compiled in, I need the exact comp executable, and then it's just going to execute one by one the, the run statements. You're not supposed to do that in line two, that you directly call GCC, but here I'm just doing it for the sake of e explanation. So percent T and percent S are, uh, percent S is this file, percent T is a temporary file just for this test, and you, then you compile it to the percent T, call percent T, give them a bunch of arguments, output that to file check, and you also pass the current file as an input to file check again. So that then is interested in the check com comments, just to, to check that, yeah, it's, it's going to check that the number of outputs is five. So uh, it required a little bit of work, just some CMake canonization, like uh, whenever you said, it, I mean, CMake is, you can just say, uh, turn it on, true, one, or whatever. So that was canon, those were, uh, Sort it start sort it as one or uh, as I don't know it falls, falls I don't remember but that was that was sort of it and that's the example I have uh, for um, an, an sparse not runnable elf file where you essentially just describe your elf file in YAML format and then say um, okay I'm like before we have those requires run and check comments and we pass it to to the lit uh, to the LLVM lit and then Essentially, it, all it does is tries to find the multiply by four uh, symbol name there that you can see at the end of line five in the content. And uh, as you can see, notice line three. Um, I had to manually remove the sim tab, but that got fixed luckily. And uh, yeah, that caused some problems. Uh, yeah, that's all I have. So if you have any questions, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Yes, please. Um, so you said in the beginning you wanted this for a, a bug reporting tool, but then later you said uh, backtraces were not, uh, were not you know, a goal of this thing. Wouldn't that be important? Uh, yes, sure, but I needed to have it in, inside of LDB first and uh, have uh, the, I mean, if you take LDB and then you can just use it. And I, I just wanted to, to, uh, to, to have it understand this mini book info. But and don't you still need uh, online? Uh, you mean like backtraces or something? Or yeah, about the data to find the previous backtraces. Um, good question. Need to maybe forward that. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you would, but you would have that, or you would use some fallback miner. And the, the, the idea is that now you can have the addresses in your have two two functions. In All right. Another question? No? Thanks, Ian.